In this module, we're going to learn how to ingest data in an Azure ML Designer pipeline. We'll do this by going through the ingest options in the designer. We'll also get an understanding of the different dataset types, as well as learning how to connect to these data sources. Let's talk about working with data in Azure Machine Learning Studio. Although our focus is on Azure Machine Learning Designer, in order to use the data inside of your Azure Machine Learning Designer, you have to first register it inside of the Azure Machine Learning Studio. So let's take a look at the list of options you have to connect your data to Azure Machine Learning Studio. First option we have is to connect locally by uploading directly to your Azure Machine Learning Studio. So this could be from your desktop. You can also upload a web file. An example of this will be uploading directly from GitHub. You can also connect to a number of Azure data stores. An example of this is the Azure SQL database. Let's talk a bit more on Azure data stores. First, you can connect to built-in Azure data stores. If you remember when we were deploying our Azure machine learning resource in the previous module, in this account, a few system blob storages and file shared accounts were created. While you can use these locations to store personal data, you also have the ability to create new blob storage accounts in Azure file shares within the same Azure storage or by creating a new one. Another built-in Azure data store is the Azure Open Dataset, and these are publicly available datasets that you can use in the designer. Outside of the built-in Azure data stores, you can also connect your own Azure data directly. You can do this by creating your own Azure storage, either for blob storage, file share, or Azure Data Lake storage. You can also connect your Azure databases, like your Azure SQL database or your Azure PostgreSQL. Let's talk through connectivity to Azure Data Stores. For Azure Blob Storage, you can connect with your Azure Account Key or your SAS token. For Azure File Storage, you have the same options, your Azure Account Key or your SAS token as well. While your Azure Data Lake Storage falls under Azure Storage, like the first two options, you need to connect with the Azure Service Principle. Your Azure SQL Database and Azure Postgres requires connection with SQL authentication. Azure SQL Database also gives an extra option with the service principle. Azure Storage comes with a unique capability of being a built-in storage, as well as having the ability to store data directly from your personal data set. It also gives you the ability to store data in any format, and as a result of all of these capabilities, it's most frequently used in Azure Machine Learning Studio. So it's important to make sure you understand how to manage permissions to access the data from Azure Storage. First, you need to make sure the user has Storage Blob Data Read to access Blob Storage. You also need to know that by default, the account SAS has no permissions until you grant it one. In order to grant read access to the container and objects, you'll want to grant the list and read permission. And for write access, you want to grant write and add permission. Let's talk through dataset types in Azure Machine Learning Studio. First, you have tabular data type. This means uploading the data in the tabular format or having the ability to represent in a table format. Example of file types you might see are Parquet files, CSV files, JSON files, TSV files, and much more. And when you upload the data, Azure Machine will represent it in a table format. The next dataset type option is the file dataset type. Using this dataset type allows you to connect to files in the data store or a public URL. The idea is to download these files or mount the files to your compute resources. Because these compute resources are VMs, so you can mount files up to them. When we go through the demo, we will see where you get to specify what dataset type you wish to use when adding your data sources to your Azure Machine Learning Studio. Now that we have a better understanding of what it means to ingest data into your Azure Machine Learning Studio, let's go into a demo of what this actually looks like inside of the Azure portal. In this demo, we're going to go through how to register a data set in Azure Machine Learning Studio. Within this process, we'll learn how to create a data store and select the data from the data store. And we'll also take a look at open data sets. Let's head over to the portal. Back in the Azure portal, you can see here that I've created a few other resources. First, I created an Azure storage account. And after that, I added an Azure SQL account. 
We're going to be using both of these accounts to test how to ingest data from some of the data sources inside of Azure. So let's go into the Azure storage account. Stepping through the storage account, I'm going to click on container and within the blob container, I have a CSV file that I uploaded called employee.csv. And we should be able to see shortly how we can get the CSV file into the Azure Data Studio as a data set. Now let's go into our Azure SQL database. If you head back into the resource group, you can see here that I created a database called AdventureWorks LT. I'll go ahead and go into the database. And within the database, there's a query editor that I'm going to click and put in my login credentials. Now that I'm signed in, you can see a list of tables within the table section. I can select top 1000 to view the data. It will script the query and I'll just run it. And here you should see a sample of the data. These are just addresses from the AdventureWorks database. You can get this from the link in the course exercises. Now that we've explored our two new data sources, let's see how we import the data from an Azure storage and Azure SQL database into the Azure Machine Learning Studio. I'll go into our Azure Machine Learning Studio and on here I'll select data sets, which is on the left hand corner under assets. You'll see a blue create data sets button. Go ahead and click it and I'll choose the option to create from the data store. Give the data store a name. I'll call mine's employee. And for the data set type, you have the option to pick between tabular and file. I'll select tabular and click next to continue on to select in the data store. On here, you see a few options. You see the option to use previously created data store or create a new data store. Since we haven't created a data store yet, I'll create a new one for one of the two data stores I showed earlier. Select create a new data store. And this will open up a section where you give the data store a name. I'll call my demo blob storage. Select the storage type. This will be Azure blob storage. And next you're going to find the storage account. The one I'm looking for has the resource name in parentheses and the resource name is build ML model. And there it is. I'll select it. And next I'll choose the blob container. Next thing I want to do is get the account key. To do this, I'll grab the account key from the Azure storage resource back in the Azure portal. So let's flip back into the Azure portal and we can see here, I still have the SQL query I ran last time. So what I'm going to do is exit out of it by selecting the resource group in the top left hand corner. You might get a prompt about unsaved work, but just go ahead and press okay to disregard that. Now in the resource group, select the storage account. And on here, choose the access key on the left hand side and press show key and copy one of the two keys you see here. I'll go ahead and choose key one, grab it and let's flip back into the Azure Machine Learning Studio and paste it there. Once you've done this, you can press create data store. Now that we've specified the data store, we can select the file we want in a blob container. You can choose a file or multiple files by selecting the browse button and select the files you need. I'll choose the employees.csv file and press next. On this section, you see a preview of the table as well as the ability to change specific things like the file format, the delimiter, encoding, column headers, or even skip some rows. I'll leave everything as it is and press next. This will take me to the schema where I can change the data type from integer to string or date or any others. As you might have noticed, the ingestion process is good at detecting details from the data. The last section will be the overview. And at this point, I'll press create. The ingestion process is pretty quick. And you can see there is a registered data set called employee. Go ahead and click on it. And you see some quick data details about the data set. I usually like to go to the explore page to make sure the data is right. And as you can see, it is. Now let's do this for the second data set, which is the Azure SQL database. To do this, we'll flip back into the data set tab, which is on the top left hand corner. And on this page, select create data set. And we will create from the data store like we did before. I'll call this address. I'll use tabular as the data set 
and press next. On the data store tab, we will create a data store like we did before, except this time we will select Azure SQL database. I'll call the data store demo Azure SQL database. And I'll look through multiple databases I have and find the one that has the same resource group in parentheses. Here it is. The authentication type for this will be SQL authentication and I'll put in my credentials. Once I'm done, I'll press create data store. Now we have a section different from the blob storage. And because this is a SQL database, we'll put in a SQL query to grab what we want from the database. I'll write a statement to pull in one of the tables called address and then press next. Now I can preview the data that I've queried and everything looks good. I'll press next again. And on this section, I can modify the data type like we saw before. And on the end, I can see samples of the data in each column. I can also decide if I want to include specific columns. And I see here, the last two columns are row GUI and modified date, which aren't really of interest to me. So I'll take them out. Press next and we'll see the summary page and I'll press create here. I can see address has been added to the data set. Select it and click explore to view the data. And here we can see the different address from the AdventureWorks database. If you click the profile tab, you can also see some statistics on the data like min, max, count, and so on. One of the good things about the profile tabs is that it's a great way to know how much data was repeated in each column. Back to the details tab, you can view different versions of the data, add tags, and even copy the SQL query. Now that we've added both of the data sources to create the data set, where can we see the list of data sources to keep track of them? You can do this by selecting the data store under manage. Under here, you can see the two data stores we added. You can also see the pre-built data stores from when we deployed our Azure Studio environment in the last module. One last piece I'd like to show here is another data set option, and this is the open data sets. If we flip back into the data sets and press the new data store button, we will see the open data sets option. And here we will see different open data sets, and these are public data readily available here in Azure Machine Learning. All you have to do is pull it into your data section. Let's grab one of them to see how it works. I'll choose the Boston Safety Data. I'll give it a name, I'll call it Boss Data. And for some of these open data sets option, you need to filter down to the time period. I'll choose between 2010 and 2020, and then I'll press Create. And now we've pulled in the open data set. To wrap up this module, let's take a look at what we've done so far. We went over the ingestion options inside of Azure Machine Learning Designer. We got an understanding of what data set types are, and we were able to register some data sets inside of Azure Machine Learning Studio. These include data sets like Azure Blob Storage, as well as the Azure SQL database.